Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selam ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Allahümme enfa'ni bima allemteni ve allemni bima yinfa'ni ve zidni ilmen inneke l'alimul hakim. Allahümme ekhrizna min zulumatil vahim ve ekhrizna bi nuril fahim ve ifte alayna bi ma'rifetil ilm ve sahil ahlakana bil hind. Allahümme zukni ni'metel ikhlas ve vecikel كريم بكل ما أقول وبكل ما أفعل آمين يا رب العالمين. My short talk today is about brain herniation types and I will discuss the subfalcin herniation. Cerebral herniation is also referred as acquired intracranial herniation refers to shift of the cerebral tissue from its normal location into adjacent spaces as a result of mass effect. There are a number of different patterns of cerebral herniation. The first one is subfalcine herniation. And in this talk, I will discuss the it. And briefly, the, it is the most common cerebral herniation pattern and is characterized by displacement of uh, brain tissue, especially the cingulate gyrus beneath the free edge of the falx cerebri due to raised intracranial pressure. As we see here, this is the falx here, this is the free edge of the falx, falx, and this is the cingulate gyrus, and this is the anterior horn, and this is the anterior horn, and this is the falx, and this is the free edge of the falx, and this is the cingulate gyrus, and here we have a mass, in a mass, causing a pressure effect on the temporal horn and pushing the cingulate gyrus to the, to the other side. And if the pressure is increasing, it will lead to ankle or temporal herniation. And if it is increasing, the pressure increasing, and there is central herniation of the brain stem through a notch. On the CT scan, the easiest method of evaluating for subfar sign shift is a straight line drawn in the expected location of the septum bolicidum from the posterior most aspect of the pharynx on axial cut. Shift of the septum bolicidum from this midline can be measured in millimeter and compare over the time to determine any change. Asymmetry of the anterior falx with widening of CSF spaces on the contralateral anterior falx. There may be epsilateral ventricular compression with contralateral ventricular dilatation. On the MRI, it is the best to be evaluated in coronal images and unilateral mass effect from pathology in the frontal or parietal or tumbular region, increase, causing increasing inter or <laughs> causing increase in intracranial pressure and displacement of of the brain away from the mass. Also, hemorrhage or tumor in these places can cause the same effect. Complication of subfarsine herniation, it is due to increase intracranial pressure will obstruct the foramen minor and cause hydrocephalus, and it will cause also conversion of the anterior cerebral artery branches and cause anterior cerebral artery infarction. Here we see subdural hematoma with mass effect on the on the right lateral ventricle and push it to cross the midline and causing dilatation of the left lateral ventricle. 
here another patient with uh, right frontal frontal subdural hematoma and we have the free edge of the falx and causing the uh, single aid gyrus uh, and push it to cross the midline and the right uh, frontal and frontal horn will push to the cross the midline to the left side with hydrocephalus. This patient has infarction with almost complete obliteration of the right lateral ventricle or with, uh, with contralateral hydrocephalus. And the patient uh, developed due to edema and mass effect, due to, he de uh, developed anterior cerebral artery infarction. Thank you very much for listening and hoping to see you soon in another talk. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.